Uh, now, uh, we are talking about the uh, Farmers uh, Conference at the moment. National Farmers Union are holding their conference in Birmingham. Rishi Sunak has been there this morning and he has told British farmers that the government is by their side as he has announced an extra half a billion pounds worth of agricultural grants. Uh, some of that in a bid to help them wean themselves off at foreign labour. It's not new money. Of course it is. It never isn't. Uh, but uh, critics say the government has spent years undermining farmers. Well, the Deputy President of the National Farmers Union, Tom Bradshaw, joins us now. Uh, good afternoon to you, Tom. Good afternoon. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I know that backdrop well at the International Conference Centre there in Birmingham from uh, party conferences. Um, Prime Minister has chosen to speak uh, th this year. You've had Keir Starmer previously. A lot of people saying, oh, it's an election year. He wants to keep rural constituencies happy. He himself represents a rural seat in Yorkshire. Um, how did what the Prime Minister had to say in terms of being on the side of farmers, how did that go down with the farmer delegates there in the conference hall? We've certainly seen the importance of food right, right up the political agenda on the back of the global crisis, the geopolitical crisis around the world, over in the Ukraine and in Israel. And so I think food security really now is resonating. He's tried to give us confidence that, that um, you know, they are behind farmers for the future, that they do really want to support us and recognise the importance of farming. The money that's been announced today was money that was already in the agricultural budget. Yeah. We welcome it because it had been underspent and there was a risk it wouldn't have been there at the end of this parliament. But it really is about putting the policies in place to underpin our food production for the future. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it sounds good. Again, we often have these announcements. Governments again and again just re-announce the same money, which is already in the budget. And you say the fact there might have been an underspend when so many farmers are struggling it would seem extraordinary. Um, how much is the issue of needing to hire foreign workers? How much has that been an issue for the farming sector? It's absolutely essential, Julia. I was hearing what you were saying earlier, but having access to a seasonal workers scheme for our horticultural sector that produce our fruit and vegetables, without a, a seasonal workers scheme, they will not be producing the fruit and vegetables here. We will offshore that production around the world, out of sight, out of mind. We have no control over the employment conditions for those members of staff. They are a crucial part of our food supply chain, and we absolutely must have a seasonal workers scheme that's fit for the future. Why can't we get Brits to do that work, though? Because I've seen various documentaries, they've tried to get Brits who are unemployed to go and do that work. And it's not, it's not minimum wage, uh, actually. It's not as low paid as a lot of people think. But Brits simply, from what I can gather, they, they don't apply for the jobs, they don't turn up on the second day. If they have turned up, they don't want to do it. Is, is it an issue that we, we're, we're just too lazy in this country? Or is it that those jobs don't pay enough? We still have historically low unemployment in this country, Julia, less than 5%. So there are very few jobs available, uh, in the, or workers available in the, in the well, rural we areas. That, where we've also got a few business. million who are, who are variously un, unemployed, unavailable for work, but, but who, are, who are claiming incapacity and sickness levels far exceeding any other Western countries' levels, which suggests there, there's some slacking going on as well. No, I mean, it, it, history shows us that the seasonal workers, wherever, wherever you are in the world, there's a migrant workforce coming in to pick the, the fruit and vegetables that are growing, that people are, are enjoying at home at lunchtime today. So I think it's absolutely vital that we have access to that seasonal workers scheme. We would love to employ more British people if they want to come and do the work, but very rarely are they in the locations where our jobs exist. OK, yeah, that's a crucial issue. And I suppose also they need work all year round and these people, seasonal workers, often move by country by country to do that work as it, as it happens. Um, well, we've, we've seen ever since lockdown um, how important being, you know, self-reliant on, on many of the crucial aspects of our life, whether it's energy, whether it's uh, uh, foodstuffs, ha has been. Do you think the government, civil servants and politicians, do you think they're taking this seriously enough now? They actually understand the need to protect our farming sector to make sure that we are, you know, able to sustain ourselves in the event of, you know, things as they have a habit of doing these days, going horribly wrong internationally? I think that's absolutely crucial, Julia. When you look at the climate change impacts, you look at the geopolitical situation, having a strategy for how we're going to produce the food for 70 million people here living on an island is absolutely essential. We want to drive sustainable food production and environmental protection, but we have to have protection from substandard imports so we don't undermine our production here in the UK. And at the moment, there are, there are elements of the trade deals which we're still going to have the consequences of. Even though this government's walked away from the Canada trade deal, unfortunately, the New Zealand and Australian trade deals have already been done that could have long-term impact. So we're asking for core standards to be implemented, which really do protect our high standards of production in this country so that farmers can get fair returns from the market 
for the food we're producing. Well, this is it. I mean, again, our animal welfare and, uh, and the like as well being, being very important and, and always at higher levels, by the way, than the EU required. The thing about being in the EU was we basically were... Uh, you know, farmers were, were under the, the common agricultural policy, mostly benefiting French farmers, as we know, it was set up to, to benefit them and other policies were set up to benefit German manufacturing. We were kind of late arrivals, we didn't get the same benefits. But there was this hope that British taxpayers' money that used to go to benefit French farmers would actually be going to benefit British farmers. But we're hearing again and again this morning that British farmers are struggling. They cannot get a decent price at the supermarkets. They're paying sky high for things like fertiliser and, and supplies. And they are really, really struggling. What more help do they need? Supply chain fairness is absolutely essential, Julia. And we've got reviews into, hort into horticulture, into poultry, but making sure that those, re those reviews really do deliver fair and meaningful returns for, for, for those that are producing far, uh, food on the farm is essential for the future. Because if we can't get fair prices for the food that we're producing that enable reinvestment for the future, then there's always going to be a question about food security. So fairness in the supply chain is something that is essential to deliver. The words are very, very easy, but making sure that those supply chain reviews really do deliver for our members is critical. Well, exactly. Well, the government has said that you know, they're going to look into that and there may be some, some legal changes there. But fundamentally, in a free market, supermarkets have got all the power. You know, there's, there's the big four, there's various others, but they've got the power that they're able to say, well, this is the price we're willing to pay for your pint of milk or for your, your sheep or your chicken. Take it or leave it. We've spoken to farmer after a farmer this morning who's called in and said, look, you know, we just don't get any say uh, on the price. We have no negotiating power. But Helena in Yorkshire, she's married to a farmer, she's just said, you know what, if we had a better union that represented us, maybe farmers, small farmers, could get together, they could use collective bargaining and they could get better prices. So isn't that sort of the job that the NFU should be doing? Unfortunately, one of the things that very few people realise is that the NFU is bound by competition law. So we have to be very careful when we're talking about fair and sustainable returns and fair market prices, because we're not obviously talking about uh, you know, fixing the price at a retail level. Prices are set by the retailers. But for us, making sure that we are able to reinvest in our businesses and make a profit is not something we should be embarrassed about. There are cooperatives that do work on behalf of farmers to negotiate collective bargaining. But you know, the, the power is with those larger retailers that really do have a lot of control over our food industry. Fundamentally, does it come down to us consumers? Because, you know, we'll, we'll say, oh, I want to buy cheaper, you know, I want to buy a chicken for a quid. I want, you know, two pints of milk for under a quid. I want, you know, we're expecting stuff in the supermarkets to be sold to us at a price which is unsustainable in terms of the actual cost of producing those goods at a sustainable level uh, in Britain. Do we have to accept that actually we've seen prices for food go up in the last couple of years because of inflation, but actually over the past few decades they have plummeted as a share of what we actually have to spend of our income? Should we accept that actually if we want to keep sustainable farming, we want to keep our um, national security uh, uh, of, through being able to produce food in this country, we need to pay a bit more in the shops? Well, if you went back to the Oxford Farming Conference, Secretary of State Steve Barclay said food security is national security. So making sure that we continue to produce the country's, country's food is essential for the future. Uh, so I, you know, I think it, we, we do used to spend about a third of our income on food. Now it's less than 10%. Yeah. Nobody is paying the true cost of anything we're consuming across society, be that food or be it the Amazon deliveries that you're having to your doors. We have to look at society as how we're going to pick up those externalities within the supply chain. Who is going to pay for them? Is it the consumer or is it government? But we, we must make sure well, that there can, is a realistic cost paid out, right the way across society. If it's the government that pays for it, it's still the consumer because we're the same people. That's what everyone... There isn't a government pot of money, it's just our money. Just finally, I can ask you, we've had these massive big protests uh, across you know, in Sweden, and we've had them, we've had them in the Netherlands, in Belgium, in Germany, in France. Um, we had a little bit of a protest by farmers in, uh, in Wales, but nothing on the same scale that we've seen as with other countries. We saw Paris being surrounded by angry farmers uh, protesting against particularly some of the net zero rules that have been brought in, the regulation from the EU as well. Are we likely to see any of that here by British farmers? The, the pressures in Wales at the moment, Julia, are absolutely a breaking point. They've got three key policy areas which are going to have a dramatic impact on the ability to produce food in Wales. It'll have a dramatic ability, uh, impact on the ability for next generations to come into farming. So I think we are at breaking point in Wales. We need Welsh Government to listen to the challenges that farming are facing and make sure they invest for future generations. At the moment, I don't feel we're at that tipping point in England. 
We need the government to prioritise food production and really underpin the words with the policy that makes sure we're producing the country's food for the future. Tom Bradshaw, our Deputy President of the National Farmers Union, thank you so much for joining us there live from Birmingham at your annual conference. Tom,